here, particularly Barry, have been anticipating for a long time, but it's also the start of what we hope is going to be a very exciting project, celebrating the, the silent film heritage of Walthamstow. So in 1910, the Gobbit brothers built the Precision Film Studios here on this spot in Walthamstow. Now the area was very convenient, as you can see, it's just out of the city, it's very close to the countryside at Epping Forest, but uh, near enough to central London that people could get back into theatre land every night. Uh, the building itself doesn't survive. This is a new <laughs> addition. <laughs> it would look quite odd to us if we could see it. As our British cinema historian Rachel Lowe wrote, the, British, the Precision Studios built by the Gobbit Brothers were the first of the specially designed studios to be built with the glass covered stages on the first floor and workshops beneath. So it would be a two story building, half brick and half glass. And here they made films of all genres, including comedies, the drama East Lynn, and the rip from the headlines thriller Anarchy in England. <laughs> Still going on in Walthamstow very much. So where the Gobbit <laughs> brothers led, others followed. Broad West, I.B. Davidson, and British and Colonial all set up studios in Walthamstow. And during the silent era, hundreds of films were made in these streets. Famous stars such as Victor McLaglen, Ronald Coleman, Clive Brook, and John Stewart appeared in these films, as well as many other people who were stars at the time but whose names are not so well remembered now. Uh, a very famous film director called Morris Elvey directed films out here. And hey! Yeah. Yeah. Hey! He's still alive! He's still alive! <laughs> still can't get work. <laughs> And uh, also, I really want to draw your attention to the fact that one of the people who directed films here was a woman called Ethel Batley, wow. one of the precious few women in Britain to be directing films in the silent era. Now, we should be every bit as proud of these studios, which no longer stand, as of the many beautiful and sadly disused cinemas that we have in the borough. So there's lots to discover and lots to celebrate. And to tell you more, here is filmmaker Barry Bliss, and we're also delighted, of course, to have Paul McGann with us today. Joined at the hip. It's nice to be first. Okay, um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this is the uh, culmination of a very long journey, uh, but paradoxically it's also the beginning of a journey. What we uh, uh, want to do is, by unveiling these plaques, is pay homage to these particular buildings and the people who worked in them, but also, if you like, to start the process of rediscovering for the borough this amazing heritage that we have. Over 400 feature films were produced in Walthamstow between 1910 and 1924, and few survive. Many more are probably tucked under people's beds, which uh, <laughs> we'll talk about later. Um, but really, this is the start of a process where we hope to commemorate all four studios, or the four main studios in the area, but also to then have community projects, uh, uh, incorporating uh, projects with schools and uh, the, the local community gen generally uh, to become involved in rediscovering this heritage. I think that what we have today is, is, is uh, 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 a tipping point where people are suddenly beginning to understand that these precious histories can be overlooked and ultimately can be lost and it's if you like almost by the skin of its teeth that we have been able to uh, uh, save and, 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 and uh, salute the heritage in film and I hope that everyone here will pass on the message that this is an ongoing project and that we want people to be actively involved and also these studios employed people locally the Duke's Head, where we go to later, was where Broadwest Studios went to recruit extras. Every day they would go into the bar and they would ask them <laughs> if people who could still stand would like to work on the film. Like press gang, you know. right? Just like press gang, yeah, putting a yeah. shilling in their pint. Yeah. Um, so any people who live locally and who have families that have lived in the area uh, 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 for some time, may have connections with the studios and the, this is what we want to encourage people to go back to their families and talk to their relatives and, and, and if you like look into family archives to see if there is any information 
any material because this history as I say is 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 very vulnerable and it it can be lost we have no images of this studio apart from one photograph in a 1910 movie magazine that's the only one we know of and there must have been photographs taken of this studio this is the first of its type in the UK this studio this was the first of a series of studios that copied this design and yet there is no photograph other than as I say this one tiny image and I just think that out there somewhere people have images of the studio they will have information about the films that were made here all of this is invaluable and we need this we need to collate yeah. this information into a proper archive and then hopefully at some point in the future make this archive accessible to the people of this area and elsewhere so anyway I'm, I've, I've rabbited on enough after we've un done the unveiling here we're gonna go towards the Duke's head but on the way we're gonna stop to unveil a second plaque for the second studio in Wood Street which was the Cunard Broadway studio so bear with us and then finally we will then go to the Duke's head where I believe even though don't quote me on this that they've created a a Hollywood E17 burger. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, mind boggles. Uh, yes, exactly. Beef burger. Uh, it's, it's part <laughs> beef, part beef, part cheese, and part clapperboard. But I mean, you know. <laughs> anyway, so with no further ado, I'll hand over to Paul McGann. Thank you. Well done, Barry. Well done. I just walk straight. You know what? I've never, I've, I've never actually seen this site until this morning. Um, uh, and it's kind of amazing Sorry. because well, we were looking around like you do, you know, for what might have been here. What, you know, you're looking at the buildings that might have been here in 1910. Uh, of course, there's very little of it. But when you think that for, for just a few years, this place and along with the other three studios in Walthamstow was a serious rival to Hollywood. You know, this, this place predated any studio of its kind in mm -hmm. Hollywood. These people, the Gobbert brothers, they were distributors first. When they opened the studio, they invented stuff. They were pioneers. You know, there was new technology, they didn't stop and stare, they, they, they tried to embrace it. Film would be the 20th century art form. Um, and in a way, you know, we can kind of, uh, you know, if we, if we can't imagine what the place looked like, and this weird kind of low brick thing with a greenhouse on top looked like, we can at least sense, I think, or imagine that spirit. Because, you know, in a way, we're at the threshold of similar ourselves now with, with, uh, with the new technologies. Anyway, um, I'm going to pull the string. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen when I put a new ball in But, um. Are you going to give us a countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, and there it is. This is your history, folks. Okay, can I finally just name check some of the people? Yeah, hang on, before he does that, I just want to say, I've known this guy for nigh on 30 years, and probably when, when we first met, you mentioned this to me. Mm. I remember. Yeah. It's been that long. Yeah. I know he's got a cigar in his pocket as well today, because it's, yeah. been, it's yeah. been a long time coming. Oh. I did. When I first, 20 odd years ago, he was telling me all about it, and yeah. he was, and I could sense his frustration then that locally people didn't really mm -hmm. know or hadn't really heard. Um, so really, this is a culmination of quite a few years of trying and campaigning and, and getting together. And he's going to tell you, well, name check the people that help. Yeah, I just want to name check. I mean, Stella, our MP. Uh, <laughs> Pam Hutchinson. Me. Lisa Fletcher. Me. Fletch Fletcher. Me. Millie Richards. Richards. Millie. And uh, sorry, and uh, Mark Clack somewhere. Hey. He's hiding, isn't he? He's camera shy. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the people immediately responsible for this plaque, but there are many others, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Yes. Thank you to the victor of the spoils. Yes. Thank you for your support. And see you at the pub. See you at the pub. <laughs> see you at the next one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go get a few okay. extras.